What is up, Responsible Day Traders? Today is Sunday, October 30th, 2022. I am Lindsay Duff, and this is Responsible Day Trading. So it's Halloween Eve. We do have a special running for you profit trader through midnight tomorrow night with 50% off. You can see the discount code right here. So go ahead and use that through tomorrow night if you want 50% off all of your accounts. Also, we did have our scholarship winners last week. Congratulations to our four scholarship winners. I'm so happy to work here with you and I'm looking forward to seeing what y'all do. So through all those applicants, we saw so many great people that we wanted to be a part of this. So, but we had to bring it down to four and um, we were really happy to bring you guys on. So I can't wait to see what you do. We had a great time in London. We worked together really well. It was so wonderful to see the whole crew. I mean, just to spend the whole week with everyone. It was amazing. Everyone got along so well and it was just like family, you know, and um, we're looking forward to having you as part of that as well. Uh, if you do want to become part of the family here, reach out to us at info at responsibledaytrading.com and we'll be happy to help you. Don't forget also, we have the Responsible Day Trading Tax Pros. And that way, you know, as we're coming up towards the end of the year, you may want to make sure that you start next year with your trading as a business. And in order to do that, you want to make sure you're set up properly. So go over there to Responsible Day Trading Tax Pros, set up a 20 minute consultation with Jay, and um, you'll be able to get yourself off on the right foot for the new year. All right, guys, so the market, whoo, I took a little look at it earlier and I'm really excited to go over it with you. Let's go first and check out the news. I really don't know what happened. I just had about a 30 minute video for y'all and it disappeared. So we're going to have to pretty much start over. All right, so let's go ahead and go to news and we'll go to market news. Here we can see that we have a lot going on this week. From Monday, we don't have anything, but Tuesday we have some at nine o'clock, which is half an hour after the market opens. Wednesday, we can see some pre-market. We have a lot going on Wednesday, right? So we've got pre-market, we've got a little bit after market opens, and we have FOMC. You may wanna be really careful with FOMC. We wanna stop probably a good 30 minutes before FOMC hits, and maybe even up until 30 minutes after. I don't typically say that about news, but we can get a spike so big that it just shoots through your stop and keeps going with a, when we have something like FOMC. So you just wanna be careful. Thursday, we've got some pre-market right after market opens and Friday pre-market. So let's go ahead and check out that market. And I'm going to make sure we're still recording. It says we are. Oh, I had some beautiful information for y'all in here. And we watched this tick counter countdown together, but that is all gone and it's not the end of the world. So let's go ahead and go over here to the daily chart. Now let's go back here just a little bit. We talked about this flag reversal bar pushing things up. We had a double bar here and we're like, oh, is it gonna pull back? Heck no, MACD stayed strong to the upside. Pulled up into the areas of the EMA. We were below the zero line. Is it gonna push down? Heck no, MACDs are staying strong to the upside. Now, something I want to look at here is, you know, we had these strong MACDs as we were coming into this area. The exact same thing is happening back here. You can see as we reach that area of the EMAs, the MACDs just smoked through the zero line. And we're seeing that same thing happen right here. So I really am going to anticipate this to push up, possibly up towards this area. I mean, we've got a little bit of a ways to go somewhere around 90 points to get up to this next EMA. And we could see that happen. But what we really wanna see happen if we're going to anticipate it to get it back above this area and break through is to get back above the area, break through, break back into it, and then continue up. And in which case we'd like to see it continue past here. Remember, we want to break away from the area. And because we never broke away and got any higher here, we knew that it was going to push down. So if we want to see this market push to the upside, we really need to see it break through the area, pull back into it and then push up. And we want to see it really get past this area to feel a little bit more comfortable that we're going to be seeing more continuous moves. 
to the upside. So currently right now on the daily chart, the direction is down. The long-term direction is down. The short-term direction is really working its way up or is up. So if we can get back above these areas, then we may see the direction shift to the upside. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the 28,657. And if this doesn't work this time, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so what we see on the 28,657 is something very interesting. And I wanna take this back just a minute so we don't see the current bar. Now we saw this tiny, tiny little bar produce here. And we're gonna look at that on the 10,946 also. We saw this tiny, tiny little bar produce and we couldn't break that top Bollinger Band. That is a huge sign of a push back to the downside, okay? So that is something that tells us that we have a really good opportunity to see this pull back. And bam, it did. Did we expect it to pull back this far? Probably not, not in one bar either. <laughs> but what we're seeing here is that we still have quite a few ticks left on this. We've still got 15,000 ticks left on this. So this BB can shift and change in that time, but we do have a resistance area here that is turned into support that we may see this pull down into and bounce off of. If we expect it to come down further, we'll expect it to come down towards this EMA, which is pushing up strong to the upside. So if it does come down here, they're gonna kind of meet in the middle somewhere, right? And then once we get to that area, we're gonna have to anticipate what to expect. Is it that area going to hold or is that area going to break? Because that is what we do here. We get to an area, do we anticipate it to hold or do we anticipate it to break? We get to the next area, do we anticipate it to hold or do we anticipate it to break? And if we anticipate it to hold, if we're in a trade, we should probably get out. If we're anticipating it to break, if we're in a trade, we could probably stay in. If we're anticipating it to hold and we're thinking about a trade, it's a great opportunity to take an area, take use that area for a bounce for a trade. Or if we get to an area and we're thinking about a trade and we think it's going to break, we may want to wait just a little bit to take that trade. All right. And we've always got to be thinking of these things as we're going through our trade day. All right. So let's go ahead and check out the immediate market. So this has had some really good looks. And I'm going to come back and talk about what I was discussing in the video that is no longer here in just a moment. But what we were looking at here first is tiny little bar didn't cross that top Bollinger band. The pushback down was really anticipated. Now, when this pulled back down, this BB was really starting to pull away with strength. It did not end up with a lot of strength between this BB and the previous BB. We got a little bit of a gap there, but not a ton of strength. Now, overnight activity is always going to be a little bit awkward. Okay. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. It's going to be a little awkward. When this dropped down here, we can see the BBs each had a lot of strength between them, but as each BB plotted, we saw that the distance between the BBs was getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it was starting to pull back into this area. When that was happening, we could see maybe possible reasons, and this may be where someone would be thinking about taking a short trade because, oh, we got a little bit of slowdown in the BBs here, but they never even turned purple until right here. And even that purple that it turned there, we had a pretty decent pullback, a couple of points pullback here before it even started to, and before it turned purple and immediately pulled back. Now we've pulled back a little bit higher and we did talk about pulling back into this area of 3909 because we were talking about the strength of the EMAs coming down here and having the EMA at this point. Now, because we have the EMAs here and we've had strong MACDs to the downside, this may be an area that holds and pushes down. If it does, we're gonna to wanna to see what happens when we get down towards this area. Are we gonna have divergence in the MACDs? Are we going to have agreement and strength and momentum to the downside? Right now we have the 10,946 still showing a little bit of push to the downside, but in reality, we're still sitting at an area that we haven't crossed yet. So, it's a, it's a watch and wait for me right now with these BBs really attempting to pull up, but let's talk about how much they pulled up. We've had a really decent pullback in this price and the MACDs haven't done quite a lot yet. So it's that mill around and make up its mind area. And this is an area that a lot of people can get caught in trying to take the shorts here or trying to take the longs because they saw this area hold here. 
So typically what I like to do is let it play itself out. And that is more of a morning situation for me. So I want to see it play itself out before I make the decision if I'm going to be a part of this um, activity or not. But let's talk about this just a little bit, okay? So we pulled down almost to an area that was just like perfect to create a bounce. I mean, look at that. I mean, I drew this line weeks and weeks ago and it just still respects it when it comes to it. So what we may see is it pull down a little bit more and just kind of reach this area before it pushes up. But it's a little hard pressed to see that happening right now. We haven't even gotten inside of the Bollinger Band on the 233. Do we have purple BBs? Yes. Have we gotten inside of it? <laughs> no, we haven't even gotten inside yet. So we still see the possibility for this to try and attempt to push back up. Now, you know, the market's going to do whatever it wants to do. And that's why we have risk requirements whenever we're trading. That's why we pay attention to those kind of things. But currently it looks like it's trying to pull up and at the very least reach up towards this bar, maybe close the gap and come up here, uh, pull back into the area a little bit more before it pushes down if it does. So it's definitely on a pullback. When we're looking at the big chart, the 10,946, long-term direction has shifted to the upside. Short-term direction is trying to make its way down, but it's actually slowing and shifting. If this BB's had a lot of distance between them and it was really dropping with some distance between them, we would really still anticipate it to push down. Um, something else I wanted to just mention about the distance and the strength between this, okay? We see that extreme strength in those MACDs, that extreme distance happen in overnight. We have very few players in the game and it can be manipulated a little bit easier at this point. Um, so, you know, typical strength is gonna look something like this. So I kind of call this like a faux strength, right? It's a little bit of a faux strength. We talked about these distance between the BBs and then very quickly, it's closing that gap of that distance between those BBs. It's gonna take a lot, a lot of work to get up and cross this top Bollinger Band, but the market's always willing to do the work. So the direction on the 1597 had really attempted to shift itself to the downside. It got below the EMAs and below the zero line, but we really wanna see getting back below this pivot. And we wanna see no divergence happening in the 1597 in order to really say, okay, yeah, this might be pushing down. And by that time, if we get back below there, we're going to want to see what's happening when we reach this EMA. So there is distance to travel and play with these kind of things, but you want to make sure you're paying attention to where your risk goes. We've talked about this a lot. I usually use two, two and a half max. If I was going to get in now at 308, I would have my risk right here in the middle. And to me, that is an extremely uncomfortable place to be because we still haven't even gotten inside of the Bollinger Bands here yet too. So we could just bounce right back up. It looks like it's really trying to push back down. Um, but right now we're just kind of in that, that limbo area. And that's where we live whenever we are in overnight activity, just live in that limbo area. So we have a lot going on here this week. We've got the FOMC. We do have a lot of news. We want to pay attention to it. We did have a pretty decent gap. It was only about 20 points in a gap. I don't even know if it was that much more about 10 points. So a 10 point gap, while it looks huge on here, really is just a blip on the screen on once we get to our bigger charts, right? Um, so it doesn't look like as much of a gap and I don't think it's quite as important for it to close, but it is definitely easier for it to close when it's something like this. What I want to do is I'm going to do what I did in the last video, which you don't see because it disappeared. Uh, and we're going to watch this bar countdown. There are 7,000 ticks left in it. We're going to see what we're anticipating during that 7,000 ticks. If you're just looking at your 233, it's telling you, oh man, we've got the opportunity. Maybe this is going to go down. We're trying to push inside. We've got the BBs rolling to the upside on the 1597, but sitting right in an area that could push it down. I'm a little hard pressed to think that this is going to go down much further than it has currently. 
I really think that we have might have the opportunity to just kind of snuggle back into this area and then push off of it and continue up. Um, we are still above the zero line and the EMA is on the 10946. So that is an upward direction. We're going to have to get back below both of these. And you can see how much strength we have in these are really wide and spread apart, which means it's going to take a lot of work to get back below that and to shift it. And the market's always willing to do the work, but we are, uh, but you know, the question is, is do I want to get eaten alive in the middle of that? Am I going to let it eat my lunch? I like to eat. So I would like to eat my own lunch in this case. It's really attempting to make that push down the 233 and things are going to move so slow guys in pre-market that you could talk yourself in and out of so many things. So you have to be really patient whenever this kind of thing is happening. Um, we've had a pretty decent pull back in the price. And when I say by pretty decent on the 233, we have three or four points happening right here between this, right? Three at least. And this is all we've seen so far in the MACD pullback. Now we could see this one move pretty quickly, cross it and continue down because we have had a very weak pullback and what's happened back here. MACDs are still outside, but there's not a ton of strength right now on the 10946. Oh yeah. It's really struggling for that push down on the 233 and I, and I don't let the 233 rule me, but what we do is we look at these little signals, you know, we had such big movement between these and as they got smaller and smaller, and these couldn't even get inside the Bollinger Band. It told me not to attempt any of the shorts that were gonna happen here. Does it mean it's not gonna go down? Absolutely not. It just means that it's not happening now. And if you get in now, it's just gonna eat you up the whole way around. It's pulling back here just a little bit. We're starting to see these BBs just have a little bit more or less distance between them, more closure between them. So, and we can see, look at this BB starting to try and turn blue and roll to the upside. Yeah, it's really trying to show us that it is pulling back, that this is not the stopping point right here, right now. These BBs are really attempting to pick up the pace to the upside. Like I said, it's going to take a lot of work to cross this top Bollinger Band. But right now, it's definitely not screaming to the downside. It's saying, hold on, it may go down there, but we may need to pull back and kind of readjust a little bit after this big drop down. Mm, the 233 is going to try and prove it, trying to push down. Got that purple BB. It hasn't crossed that bottom band yet. Let's see if it's going to do it. And you may be like, Lindsay, why are you not taking longs when you see little bits of reversal bars here? Oh, we don't have far to go to that last area that just created the little bit of a bounce right here at the, you know, 912 area, basically right here. Um, this area already created a, a tiny bit of a bounce to the downside, nothing significant, but a tiny bit of a bounce to the downside. And it is an, at an area that could really just pull us back down. The MACDs are still outside here. So just, you know, being a little bit cautious, you just kind of wait for the right signals. you can see that BB never crossed the bottom Bollinger Band here. We're trying to turn blue and move to the upside. Hmm. I want to watch this bar call. I want to watch this bar close, but it could really take something like up to 20 minutes or more. And it's um, 3630. So I'm running a little late on getting this video out today. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. All right. So paying attention, really knowing what it's telling you, breathing, being patient means the world and the trading world, right? It means everything. So you just need to make sure that you're paying attention, 
you know, when you see that really strong move in overnight material, it doesn't necessarily mean that that strong move is going to continue. It may mean that you just need to pay attention to the very small variations and what could change at that point. Um, don't forget guys, if you have questions, definitely reach out to us. You can reach out to us at info at responsibledaytrading.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. We do have some openings currently, even though we just had the scholarship, we do have some current openings. So if you're interested in being a student here, reach out to us, let us know, use that code for you profit trader. It's only good through midnight tomorrow and that 50% discount will no longer be available. So, and we don't do those very often. So get them while you can. All right. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. I hope that everybody has an amazing week. I am going to be leaving for Colorado next week, so I probably won't be able to do the Sunday rundown. I'm going to have to ask Jason to do it, but um, I should be back for the next one after that. And then I'll be home for a while with you guys. But guys, have a wonderful week. And as always, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side. <laughs>